Good afternoon and welcome to the Nancy Catch Caregiver Show and we're so glad that you could join us today. Uh, it's about a week before Christmas and uh, we know that the caregivers are probably uh, trying to uh, juggle stress from everything that they're dealing with and so you know we're going to talk a little bit about that today uh, but we're glad that you're here and uh, we're, we're going to be talking a lot about Alzheimer's and dementia today and some of the things that uh, has been going on uh, this week when we've been in the community making presentations and trying to learn what the caregivers feel and how they're dealing with with their struggle to understand this this disease. But in the studio with me today is my co-host, is Christy Johnson. Thank you for being here again. Thank you I'm for really, inviting me. I it's, always enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's really great. I know um, Ron is not in the studio today. Some things are going on there and, and stuff, but uh, I'm so glad that it has not started snowing yet. <laughs> and the weather is still somewhat pleasant. Mm -hmm. I, I often wonder, yeah, are we going to have a, a winter like we did last year with the very warm, very few flurries but you know we need that cold we need the snow and we need the cold to kill the germs we, we need the snow summer. for the children get them outside <laughs> and let them play and yeah go down walking. The hills and yeah the it's 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 a great I used to love um, you know making a what we called cut the cheese and it would, it would be a fresh snow and and the kids on the playground would make a circle and then we would go through the snow like pizza Oh, and then in the middle it was the free spot, and so you it was your it was up to you. Somebody was always it. We called it it. The person that had to catch you, right. and we'd run around the circle and try to get to the middle before we got caught. And uh, it was always so much fun, and that was one of my favorite games in the winter. And or in the snow angels when you could lay down and make a snow angel. That was a lot of fun. But uh, you know now I've grown up, and now I like the labyrinth. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Let's stay in where it's warm exactly. and walk and, and do it. Yeah, and, it's yeah. just so much fun. Uh, but, uh, mm. yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Alzheimer's support groups. Uh, Christy and I have had an opportunity all week to uh, visit several Alzheimer uh, support groups in the area. And, you know, first of all, we want to thank uh, the Frankamuth group, and we want to thank uh, the Clio group and uh, where else and we flushing, flushing and flushing, we went yeah. we went to another one didn't we Did we have four um, this week that we went to I, we, I went to Lapeer prior to that yeah yep. it yep. was we've met some fabulous people yeah and actually um very very good social workers or uh, that work with them that give them helps and uh, helpful hints on explaining to the caregivers that their their loved ones are not um, content in helping them to get on an even keel, I believe, mm -hmm. giving them uh, courage and encouragement. Yeah, they're learning that as this disease progresses, that um, a person kind of, the person that has a disease loses their reasoning skills. And I think that is what I picked up um, meeting with these different groups. And um, it's tremendous sorrow for the families, and especially the, the spouses. And it was interesting. We had an opportunity, and we didn't know this. Uh, we were at one of the groups, and we had an opportunity to introduce ourselves and kind of join in, not to take over the meeting, but just to join in. And it, it came around, and there was an individual that said, I'm so-and-so, and I have dementia, or was it Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and talked about some of the things that this person was facing, uh, the forgetfulness and um, this the frustration. And, yes. and it was just, I just couldn't believe it. I, it was this, this individual chose to be honest and opened and and actually explain to the people and ex including us mm -hmm. what it's like from the inside out rather than the outside looking in and it was just so it was sad it was so sad because uh, it's hurtful he's in the moment and he's going through things and helping us understand and everybody could everybody everybody knows. could understand and yet he was on both sides, and he says, I don't have much to give. 
but what I can do is share with you people what is going on and how this disease is taking over. And what courage. Oh, that took a lot to come in and actually... He's a very educated man, very, oh very goodness. educated. Wonderful. And very succinct in his speech. And tell us the things that, uh, their vision mm-hmm. problems that they have. Um, he went looking for the remote control yeah. to the TV. Yeah. And he got up and walked all the way around the room, only to find out that when he sat back down in the same identical chair he was in, yeah. it had been sitting right next to him right. all the time. Right. There, it, it just... That's why I think caregivers get frustrated because they they can see it, but the Alzheimer's patients live in a cloud. I think they feel yes. it. They have they feel their feelings, but they can't think it. They can't explain it anymore. They but they can feel it. Right. You know, and I remember with my patients is that, um, and I used to tell family members that your your loved one knows you're in the room because when mom or dad. Um, when, when they were young parents and they were maybe sleeping on the couch or watching TV and they were kind of in that twilight zone and you came in the room, they knew who you were by your footsteps, just by your presence. Mm-hmm. They knew that. And I, I know that. I knew each one of my kids when they were trying to sneak in or whatever. You know, I just <laughs> knew that. But you, you were sleeping enough where you didn't really want to wake up, but you were very conscious of what was going on without opening your eyes and actually getting a visual of who that person was. But this is how it is a lot of times for people with this disease. They know your presence, but they can't yeah. recognize who you are. Uh, yeah. They can't open their eyes and understand because that part of their brain has been destroyed and they can't get it back, but they still know your presence. And uh, it was very enlightening. And you know, we, we learn so much from the people, but I think the biggest thing is the sorrow that it's very sad and there's nothing you can do but I think what happened is the um, individuals in the support group and this was all the ones that we went to I think we could honestly say that their ability to voice their pain and express their sadness without being interrupted uh, judged condemned was extremely Uh, beneficial to that caregiver because they all are at different stages in this walk that they're they're on Mm -hmm. but there's also a fear and so many of the the caregivers were in a stage of acceptance right and once they accepted it then it was okay now it's duty duty and love to take care of somebody that can't take care of themselves exactly and uh, the different responsibilities but they are very courageous. Oh, they are, and I, I was astounded at the young, the, the young, young people faces that we have of there. caregiving. That's right, uh, young gals in their late twenties, yes. maybe early thirties. Yes. yes, and they are just... a whole family. The one lady had the whole family, the uncles and the mother, and uh, courage. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's interesting because when you're younger, you're more resilient. But yeah. she, she was very stressed and mm. and getting to a point of burnout but it's just real interesting this is this is what's coming and there it's an avalanche and it's coming and um you know here we sit at this age that we are which we I haven't say. even thought about <laughs> I, I haven't even thought about is this going to affect me but I'm all around it it's almost like oh you know is it contagious we don't know we don't know, we don't know. well the young gal was said she I don't know if she was even 30 and she said Three family members, three generations had had Alzheimer's. And so she just assumed that she was going to get it too. Yeah. It was, that was devastating to me mm-hmm. to hear at that age. Yeah. Just, I but could The knowledge, see, they're not, they're not sweeping this thing under the rug or, mm-hmm. or trying to push grandma or grandpa in the corner or in the closet someplace. <laughs> I mean, it's out in the open. It's not going to go away. And, right. and uh, you know, there's, a, there's huge... Uh, strides in what's going on. Again, the research is saying that uh, perhaps the animal protein is what's causing this problem. If you have plaque buildup in your arteries, it's going to just not affect your body. It affects your brain. And they know this by the autopsies that they do, and they they have their ways of examining the brain. And, uh, you know, Dr. Chatfield, see so you here, he could explain all yeah. that. But, you know, uh, he told me that a long time ago. 
it's in the brain. It's the plaque. But, you know, there's not a whole lot being said about prevention. And that was one thing that um, perhaps maybe is the message for the young people now. Is maybe maybe it can be prevented, maybe it can't. We don't know yet. yet. One thing I've heard is that um, a combination of white sugar and white flour creates a condition in the blood that allows the plaque to build up faster. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why you have fewer instances of that plaque build up in people who don't have such a diet of heavily refined products. That's one thing I've heard, but I don't know. That again, that's a, several studies are going to come out show that's true, and then several other saying that's not the case. So. But I think there's some. I think there's a possible validity behind that. I mean, it makes sense to me. Just if you look at it as a pipe, you know, something sticky on the yeah. inside wall would give rise yeah. to something to be able to adhere to. Mm-hmm. So that's what I, I just read about that the other day, and I was like, that's what I think. There's a lot of sense to that, common sense. But well, I don't know if that bears out in in medical model. But it's common sense. It does seem to have some kind of appeal. You know. Yeah, and they say that the the white processed flour and the sugars and stuff they call it white poison and you know we know from dieting and things like that if you take out those carbohydrates you will lose weight you will not have a weight problem but we like our bread I know I like my bread you know I love my cookies but you know I know when you're under a lot of stress that's the first thing you do your endorphins have to be fixed they have to be satisfied and so the first thing you're going to do is go get a cookie a sandwich or something chips or whatever it is you eat because that your endorphins need that fix that comfort food comes into play and all that goes along with what John was just saying about the white 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 things and you know flour uh is in everything mm-hmm. everything and uh in fact when we have our uh pamper party there's a special dish i'm going to make and we're going to need white flour for it but <laughs> but it's called scottish eggs i'm going to make oh. scottish eggs and scottish eggs it's really neat um i know i have never i'm, gonna, I'm, never I'm, starting, I'm going to start revealing some of my my recipes uh. you take a hard boiled egg take the shell off obviously and you you know you wash it off you put these eggs in the refrigerator and then you take a breakfast sausage any kind of breakfast sausage you want oh of course mine i'm going to season and you take that breakfast sausage you make a little patty and you wrap it around that hard boiled egg oh my okay then you roll that sausage in a seasoned flour oh. an egg wash and then you put a particular type of breading on it. And I won't no. say what that is yet. And then you deep fry it. So when our guests come to the pamper party and we have our brunch, that's going to be one thing that they're going to have. I'm also going to make curried uh, carrot soup. Oh, and that's just fabulous. Oh, and, sounds uh, heavenly. And some other some other salads that'll be delicious. I'm going to make a caramel apple salad, which is uh, something that. You know, it, it's been around forever, and I'm going to make a cranberry fluff. Although, I'll give this recipe out for the cranberry fluff. You just take a, a can of, you want the ocean spray, can okay. of whole berries. You open it up, and you just put it in a dish. You want to take um, uh, the large can of pineapple mm-hmm. tibbets, if you can. You can use crushed pineapple if you want to, but tibbets are better. And you want to drain that juice. And you want to take that juice and you want to put that juice into a vanilla. French vanilla is the best. French vanilla instant pudding. And you whip that together. Okay. And you add a container of Cool Whip to that. Okay. And then you kind of fold it in. And you really want to make sure that that pudding mixture gets dissolved. Oh, is this all you know, in a, with a wood spoon and yep, a plastic bowl? Yeah, you just can bowl? whip it or yep, throw okay. it. I always use my KitchenAid. But, mm-hmm. you know, throw it in there. Get that all nice and uh, custard-like. Oh. And then you take the, the fruit mixture and you can throw a little bit of orange zest in there or lemon zest which if you have it around. Okay, you mix all those together. Put it in your refrigerator. Put it in a real pretty bowl. Put it in the refrigerator, and just before you serve it, you want to put, um, uh, what do you call it, chopped up walnuts, unsalted walnuts, over the top of it. Okay. And then you can take your canned whipped cream and make your pretty little stars and uh, serve that. And that is absolutely fabulous oh, oh we will it's eat good so that good day, and so oh, that's yeah. a very very simple recipe mm-hmm. and uh you know it's just some of these recipes i have my kids uh you know they still ask for that my boys will actually mm-hmm. make them but anyway that's the recipe for today Excellent. Sounds <laughs> i'm gonna give out yeah. of course it's not good for you you've got your sugar and your white and everything but you know hey it's christmas but we have know, to eat it's, enough it's in excess that. that's yep. the thing it's in excess and uh you have to have the walnuts if you don't have the walnuts it's just not the same oh, and you really okay. need to use the cranberries that are whole berries 
Oh. It's just not the same without it. You can try to use the gelled cranberry sauce, but it's just not the same. Okay. And uh, if you use ocean spray for some reason, it has a a stronger um, flavor to it. It's that gives you that pucker power. Oh. You know, is that mm-hmm. you know because it's you bitter. That. It's a bitter. It's a bitter fruit. So nice, that's nice. really good. But uh, anyway, that's the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll eat enough fruits and vegetables to kind of exactly. for that. Yeah, well, we're going to have a good time at the pamper party, and you know, we're going to announce all those things a little later. But you know, we're, we're still talking about the Alzheimer's um, condition, and um, we uh, really have some great information. This magazine is a free magazine. It's a publication put out by um, I'm trying to think. It's the Alzheimer Foundation, which is different than the Alzheimer's Association. There's actually two, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And so, but they're both equally well. And this is the Care Advantage. It's a free magazine that you can pick up. um, And if you do want to um, have it mailed to your home, um, you can get on the internet and look for that. This is the spring 2012 publication. And in it is, there's some really great articles, but the one that uh, caught my eye was mostly about the legendary coach, uh, Pat Summit. And Pat Summit, many of you, if you like your sports, you will, will remember her. She was the female coach for the University of Tennessee. And um, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and this article is about her and it's it's just beautiful but it's from the eyes of her daughter Oh. and there were some really neat things in here and I thought it was just really great and and this is what her daughter says she says we knew that God had something bigger in store for my mom than just coaching basketball and I thought that was really interesting and some of the things that I highlighted in the article were were things like um, she goes for a daily walk with her Labradors Aww. three times a day. She's very active. She still exercises and lifts weights. Um, very important to stick to a routine. I think the more routine you keep, it's it's the continuity in your brain because you start you start forgetting. You start. Um, and you can't replace what you have forgot. So if you keep up the same routine, it's going to, like you say, it's continuity. Mm-hmm. You will not, the old phrase, you know, use it or lose it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the routine, because mm-hmm. the mind's going to go anyway, and they know this, but they, they have a routine. But it, you can slow the disease down by some of these techniques. Mm-hmm. But if you sit idle, it's not good, because no. your brain has to work. It's just, just the way it's meant to be. But that was really interesting. And then um, she said that they... They're always using the best medications. And I thought that was interesting. The best medications. How in the world do you know what works best? There's so many patients that we've come across in the last couple of weeks, and they're on this medicine or that medicine, and it does this and it does that, and some people hallucinate and the other ones don't. And how do you know if it's a hallucination or just the disease? Very, very complex oh. problems. And how does just an ordinary person uh, figure that out? And, you know, they just need to go to the doctor often. Right. I, I lost my mom from Alzheimer's. And she was uh, she was uh, in the olden days a dame. She was like the snappiest one. She had nails done. She you know, just had everything going, dressed to the nines, as they said. And she would... Even though she had Alzheimer's, she still had to have her nails done, but she would be very frustrated if she knew that she did not remember what article of clothing goes where and how Mm -hmm. to dress. Mm -hmm. Their coordination, you lose your coordination, you lose your memory, you lose your, you don't, she did not lose her self-respect and her her self-esteem, but she could not verbalize what she needed and wanted. Mm-hmm. And that was just so hard to watch, uh, to watch her um, disappear before your very eyes. Yeah. Just disappear. Yeah. And when the, some of the Alzheimer's patients get um, physical and aggressive, it's um, so hard for the caregivers to understand why yeah. all of a sudden their husband wants to take a swing at him. Yeah, and 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 the other lady was saying that uh, the husband kept swatting all the women on the butt. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and it was hurting her. 
And she's like, why are you being unfaithful to me? <laughs> well, you yeah. know, but it's, the, you know, it's mm-hmm. hurtful. It's it hurtful. Is. It was. We had to explain that. That's, don't take it personal. No, you can't yes. because they're not, you mm-hmm. know, but. Yeah, we know men are men. <laughs> we know men are men. <laughs> well, yeah. But it's so true. But I thought that was kind of interesting what she said about being on the best medicines. And they're always coming out with something because they're, there's all this money being raised and they use that money for research. So, you know, I, I don't know if there's a cure or not. I, I don't know. We, maybe we will never know. But they're trying. We're they're trying. trying. It's a devastating mm-hmm. disease. The other thing that uh, she stated was that they both, her, this Miss Summit and, and her daughter, mm-hmm. they're both growing closer to God. I thought that was interesting. Um, it was just, I just found that really interesting because I know how my faith is, but I try not to um, let it interfere. I try not to voice how I feel and what my, my personal belief is, but I thought that was really interesting in this type of magazine that it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay to say you're growing closer yeah. to God, which is kind of nice. And um, then the other one was um, it impacts your job. I thought that was really interesting because employment, whether you're the caregiver or the, the person that has the disease, it affects everybody. That's huge. Your, your income is going to suffer. Uh, the employer is going to suffer. The customers are going to suffer. Everyone's going to suffer. It becomes just not one person's problem. And uh, it's a tough spot to be in, especially this type of a basketball coach. Oh. How in the world do you replace somebody like that? Oh, that's been on the top. Exactly. Typically, I mean, exactly superior on the top of in the game. game superior. And su- just superior teacher, uh, coach, the whole thing, a person, just everything. And how in the world do you replace somebody like that? That would be very difficult. And I just thought that was really interesting. I, I just thought this article was so well done. But lastly, she said that it's a team approach. Being a caregiver and being somebody that has the disease, it's a team approach. You need to have your team to help you get through everything that you need to go through so that your loved one is as comfortable as possible mm-hmm. and not really... Um, they are falling apart at the seams, both the individual that has the Alzheimer's and the caregiver, because after a certain time, you, you start... Um, you don't lose your patience, you don't lose your understanding, you lose yourself. Yes. Because you have, you feel like you have to take on all the responsibility yourself. Right. You have to make sure that that loved one is cared for, this and that. And it's, some people do not have a backup. No, they don't, because it takes a long time to build a relationship and a community of friends. And if you've never had an opportunity to do that, and then this type of a disease affects your family, you're going to be isolated. You will be alone. And it's just the way society is. That bothers me right now. You know, especially, we're going to switch gears a little bit now, but especially what happened in Connecticut. You know, again, our country is mourning. Again, as I state over and over again, do you have a plan? Anything can happen. Your life can change in an instant. Do you have a plan? No one ever expected these innocent little kids to be violently harmed like they were. And it's just an unthinkable crime. The pain, uh, I just, everybody. Mm. Everybody. You know, and I was listening to the radio this morning. I had an appointment, and I'm in the car, and WHNN, Johnny Burke, uh, stated that there was a printing company that uh, printed a huge angel card. And they are taking this card to all the different malls for two or three hour period for the community, the mid-Michigan area, to go and sign that card. So this card can be mailed to Connecticut for the families. Oh, that's phenomenal. You know, and I know to in our building, know. I wanted to put a vigil candle in there. So if you wanted to come and, you know, state your condolences or whatever it's available to do that i just it's unthinkable i do not know how in the world uh we're going to get over this one oh this this country this was probably the worst incident i've heard of ever the little kids i just Mm. it's unthinkable and uh it's wrong 
it's wrong. I don't know necessarily if I would agree that they should ban guns. I don't. I don't think it's that. It, it's how in the world do you get inside a person's mind? That person could not be um, considered, in my opinion, um, normal. Oh, they, their parents, their their they, aunts of the 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 parents of the children, oh the aunts goodness. and uncles, the cousins and the. Everyone is suffering. Everyone will suffer. It's, it's horrible. Not just the country, not just the state of Connecticut, but everybody, perhaps in the world, is suffering that. And not one of us can sit and ignore this. I don't know what the answers are going to be. I do not know what the government's going to do. Uh, but I do believe the government is going to step in. And this is enough. Enough is enough. There's too much of this going on, and it, it needs to stop. But we need to take a look at what is going on and the value of a person's life. You know, our elderly community is so disrespected. Age is not a respected presence. It's not. It's discrimination. And, you know, it's always looked upon as, you know, there's money to be made. If you're over 60, there's money to be made, and we're going to try to find a way to get it. Mm -hmm. And yet we look at these little kids that lost their life violently. And, and the trauma of that school, that the people in that school, it just it's horrible what's going on. Just to, What's happening to our educational system now over this? Mm. What's going to happen? We try to send our kids to school. We know they need an education, especially in Flint, Michigan. It's so vital that our children receive an education. There's violence in this town all the time. And, you know, we're, we're on the, the books as being the most dangerous city in the country. But, you know... I don't, nothing like this has happened in Flint, Michigan, that somebody comes in and just takes everybody out, you know, it's just wrong. It's wrong. It's It's wrong. wrong. But yeah, you know, it seems to be a recreation in this town, and yet we seem to get labeled for it all the time, and yet these poor little kids in a quiet little uh, perfect town, Mm -hmm. with a perfect image, bam. Gone. They're they're, they're gone. And it's wrong, and I just do not know what the answer is, but my heart is breaking it's Christmas time. Uh, my heart is hurting for not only for myself because each time something like this happens, it touches that grief that I've suffered. But it, I just can't imagine the how those those family members feel and the courage that they have to think that they're going to open up maybe the Christmas gifts that they had bought ahead of time for their children. Now these Christmas is going to come. The gifts are going to sit there unopened. All that grief. It's going to hit this family, and I don't like it. For Not nothing. One bit. And there's no reason. There is no, there's no reason. reason for it. Something definitely went wrong. And, you know, Christy, we've talked um, privately about the bipolar issues. Mm. And uh, I am, I'm beginning to understand and learn about this bipolar uh, ep- epidemic, I would call it. Uh, I'm not sure if this individual that, that's been accused of shooting these children had bipolar or some type of a mental condition. We'll never know. It's not up to us. It's in the investigator's hands. But I know in this town uh, what's going on. And so many of our homeless individuals, I've been told, need medication to keep them stable. Um, And it's just such an epidemic. And I'm trying to learn and understand about this devastating type of uh, disorder that these individuals are born with and apparently there's medication that these individuals can be on it's a but if they don't have a job how are they able to stay on the medicine because it takes money and to buy to, the the yeah. medication but it's just really interesting i bipolar seems to be more of a negative tone than manic depressive to me it seems to be a, a a harder label and nobody wants to be labeled yeah. like that and we're not we're not supposed to do that it's discriminatory but I'm very concerned about that but what I have learned about the disease is that the seasons cause them to change oh. spring mm-hmm. and fall I never knew that and and you know when we think about it when do these killings occur with the college killing that we had um, the Oklahoma right. bombing Mm -hmm. It was in the spring or the fall. It's always been spring Mm -hmm. or fall. It's when bipolar, people have a hard time keeping on an even keel, basically, is what it is. 
And if you do, like Nancy says, if you have the medication that you will follow and you will it's and you get counseling there's counseling involved too in order to keep individuals on an upbeat and an even keel but when you come down to the gray what we call the gray days mm -hmm. and it's, it's like late spring and early fall and or maybe i said that in reverse but when it's the gray days those are the days that you see the depression hit people have no um they have no desire to get up and uh, move. I mean, people, I've known them that they just want to go to bed. Yeah. And they have full-time jobs. Sleep. And, and they want to sleep. They want to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, it's been suggested sometimes psychologists will have you um, go to the tanning spa, yes. the tanning booth for like two weeks, maybe a two-week period, so that you are um, hit with the, 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 the light in order mm -hmm. to... You know, the light is a brightness. It's it's good for you. It's a happy time. If you're out in the sun and you're playing as a child, you're ecstatic. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need is we, it's it's the gray days that really bring the depression in. And, um, you know, we can't, the one thing too, though, if you're manic depressant and you're on medication, oh, please don't drink. Please do not put alcohol with that. It just oh, totally yeah, yeah. And destroys what, the, the And that's what the I product. thought, too. I, I had the understanding that, um, and this is just my, it has nothing to do with medical or anything. It's just my theory, yeah. is that an individual that may have a substance abuse, a liquid substance abuse, uh, their endorphins need to be fixed. I always go back to the endorphins because that is truly what needs to be adjusted. And they will self-medicate using these liquid uh, products, right? The alcohol and, and whatever whatever it is they they have. And um, I think every family knows somebody that has a condition that's undesirable. And before I know when I was being brought up, you know, if you had a condition like this, you were shunned, mm. stay away. But that's not the case anymore. Now it almost seems to be uh, something of pride. And, uh, and that's okay because there's more awareness and that's fine and we want people to, to be taken care of. But I, it goes right back to what I was saying earlier is that it seems to me that when we have these awful, awful uh, shootings mm -hmm. and there's mass people, uh, it's either spring or fall. And most always. of the times there's always, they'll say, well, he was going, or he, it's always, I don't think there's been a woman that's done right. this, but he was on medication. He was right. depressed. And they, sometimes they, the individuals will over-medicate themselves, maybe because they take the pill and they feel good. And, well, you know, I'm supposed to take it every four hours, but I start to feel a little bit. And I thought a this little was, bit better now, so yeah. I'll take it now. And two hours later, and you need to work with the doctor. You need to go to counseling. You need to work with your family. You know, work with your family members. Mm -hmm. Try and stay in an upbeat. And get off your behind. Go out and take a walk. You know, walk your lab. Walk your dogs. Or just be busy. The activity helps. Activity yeah, it does helps. help because that actually stimulates things, gets the blood moving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some truth to these walks, you know, for any type of disorder. And the other thing I thought was interesting is if if you have a, a bipolar issue or, you know, something like that, that that is considered a mental illness. However, Alzheimer's and dementia is not. Oh. So if you were an individual and you were a caregiver and you thought, well, we're my parent or my spouse or whoever is having these mood swings and we need to go to community mental health to try and get some help, they're going to say, I'm sorry, that is not a mental illness. Mm. And so then it leaves the families with, now what do I do? You know, right. that kind of thing. Right. But I thought that was interesting. So this whole, this whole Alzheimer dementia movement is fascinating to a point and extremely mm. um, beneficial you know, for the people that have gone through it already, and now they have something to share with the people that are, are starting to go through the journey. Um, you know, it, it's exhausting. And, you know, I want, I want to lead this into the next thing, which is the respite care. Hmm. You know, I want to remind everyone out there that um, if you have a loved one and you are in a place where you need some respite relief, I want to assure you that there's a safe place for you to take your loved one, and that's to Christy Cares. Christy's got a beautiful facility 
out in Kyle, a quarter mile mm -hmm. south of Vienna Road on Saginaw. It's on the west side of the road. It is a 5,000 square foot facility uh, with everything you can imagine in that building to give you respite care. The beautiful thing about it is that you can call Christy a half an hour before you need to drop this loved one off. If you want to go to play poker or you want to go to the casino or shop up at the mall or something and you just are really needing to get out of the house or maybe you just want to stay in your house by yourself for once and watch a movie or bake your cookies without any confusion. You know, this is why Christy designed her business is because she saw a need that was there was a void and she has created this wonderful drop-in care center for individuals that have family members that have Alzheimer's and dementia. It's open 24 hours, and you can just give her a call at 964-2202, at and she'll be right at that building if there's not somebody there uh, already, and you can get that much needed break. The prices are very reasonable. Uh, actually, they're, they're under what the national norm is, uh, very affordable. And uh, what the Nancy to Catch Caregiver Institute has decided to do is that if you want to just try this out, we're going to pay for one free hour for you. So if you want to come to Christie's Care, you need four hours, you're only going to pay for three. And we're going to take care of that individual because we're both in this together for respite services for you, the caregiver, because we know you need a break. And it's holiday time. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of needs out there. Maybe you just want to make cookies or popcorn balls or something, and you need to get that person out of the house. It's okay. Bring them over. And we I know you got a full house today, <laughs> and it was hard for you to get out of the building. But, you know, you're here with me, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. But mm -hmm. it's really great, and, and we're getting really great reviews about um, the type of care that's provided there. And uh, we've been asked to make more and more presentations to the different groups. Now we've been asked to do uh, presentations at the local churches. And uh, yeah, there's a big need out there and we know that. And it's just wonderful that this type of, of uh, business exists. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, I'm a part of it. Well, thank and, you. you know, it's thank just you. really great. It's just really great for families. But um, I want to switch gears a little bit and uh, talk about some of the upcoming guests we're going to be having oh, for the great. new year. We have we have so many people that are lined up for this show. Now, we're not going to be on the next two weeks because it's Christmas and New Year's Day, so we won't be with you then. But the next uh, year, we are going to have, hopefully, better cameras. <laughs> we have better clarity because we've been getting some complaints from our, our viewers and stuff that they want to see us a little better. But this is a great little show. We have an average of about 2,400 viewers oh, and, uh, good. and growing. And so, you know, it's it might be just a little show, but it, it people are watching us. They like what we have to say, and they like the guests that we bring on. And, and we're thankful for the viewers that have been watching us and listening to me all year long on the different networks. And I want to thank each and every one of you for allowing that to happen and that I couldn't grow in popularity if it weren't for people like you. So I thank you for the time that you've given me uh, this year to help me grow. And there's so many great, exciting things coming uh, um, you know, on uh, this next year, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to talk a little bit about that, but we'll do that uh, towards the end. But I do want to talk a little bit about my wonderful friend, Linda Cochran. Linda has a uh, tax accounting business, okay. and she wrote a book, and it's very interesting. Um, after my husband passed away, of course, we had some problems with our taxes. I didn't owe any money to the government, but Joe did, and uh I and he ended up owing ten thousand dollars to the IRS, and Linda was able to save me six thousand oh, dollars when excellent. I went to see her. Linda has a book, and it's called Breaking the Tax Code, and she is going to be our guest at the Pamper Party on January twelfth at Christie Cares, and uh, she's going to talk to us about what we need to do. Uh, to protect ourselves and and if you become a widow or a widower you know there are some some simple things that you can do uh that uh she's going to share but mostly um she's a really good person she really cares about you mm -hmm. as an individual and those are the kind of people i like i i you know i believe everyone should should be able to make a living but i also believe that service 
and it's just my opinion, service comes before, uh, you know, the financial part. We need both, but sometimes it's just really great to have that support, that, that knowing you can go into someone's office and, and you're treated like a human being. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. Linda's going to treat you that way. And she's going to make a presentation, the January 12th Pamper Party at Christy Cares on Saturday, January 12th. It's going to be an absolute riot. Uh, we are looking for sponsors. If you're an individual and you would like to help support the, the Respite Scholarship Fund, we're asking you to sponsor a table for $50. Oh, and yes. uh, it's going to be so much fun. It's a round table. We're going to provide the round table with the tablecloth and the eight chairs. And you're, you're going to sponsor the table, $50. You will set the table. You will decorate it according to anything that you want as long as you go with the theme called Pamper. And uh, I'll just give you a little hint. We have one company that is going to use bedside commodes for the table, or for the chairs. For the chairs. The chairs. Yeah. And I said, you can't use a bedpan or a spit right. spit container for a salad bowl or anything. But, you, uh -huh. you know, that was fun. But anyway, it's really kind of cool because there's going to be 10 of these pamper parties uh, throughout the year uh, on every second Saturday of the month. And with this, the caregiver will come, and there will be six therapeutic activities for you. There'll be three dynamic presenters, and uh, the money all goes to the respite scholarship fund, and then you get to advertise who you are. If you're a vendor and you want to come and participate and show your wares, we can accept 20 vendors, $35 a piece for that table, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll be able to um, make a huge impression on the 72 uh, caregivers that can attend at one time and uh, you'll get to see Christy's facility and you'll get to see what she's all about and why we really endorse her and why we feel she is so unique uh, and it's fun it's fun to go into Christy's building it's just full of sunshine and uh, we really try to make it a happy place for everybody Excellent. and it's going to be a really really great thing but Linda Cochran has a lot of interesting things that she wants to share and we met this morning and we talked about some of the things and you know we says why don't we just do a myth and a facts type of education what are the myths that we believe in uh, is there an opportunity to hang on to your receipts and write them off at the end of the year or you know just what is it we can do and we know that every single year that the government changes what you can deduct and she has to know what that is so she's mm -hmm. going to share that with us and uh, also she'll be there to sign her book oh, uh, and yeah. she is just a wonderful wonderful person and uh, we want to make sure that uh, you get to know who she is. Buy her book if you want. It's $20, hard-covered book. There's a ton of information in this little book here. And uh, we're excited to have her. Of course, Dr. Schmidt's going to be with us again, and she's going to be making her famous presentation, Bubbles and Flowers, which is what I call it. And it's a fantastic presentation for caregivers. She will make you understand and appreciate your role. Oh, it's going to be Schmidt. so much fun. Oh, she's just a riot. She and, uh, is. By far, yeah, above and beyond. She is so neat. Person, she is phenomenal. Yeah, and, and uh, she's just getting uh, known up here in, in our area. Mm -hmm. But she actually uh, was awarded a Doctor of the Year by the Alzheimer's Group, Excellent. and that was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful accomplishment. And she's just a, she's a part of the Nancy Catch Caregiver Institute. She's on our board, and she's a wonderful person. What I love about her is that um, she treats the whole person and the whole family if you're dealing with the situation. It's really interesting that she looks at the caregiver and says, are you taking care of yourself? Uh, very, and she's you, very, and she's direct, very blunt very direct. and she will yes. not. And then yeah. she'll tell you. But uh, mm -hmm. anyone that has ever heard her, uh, she's in high demand and she's just wonderful. And I hope that you will um, accept this invitation to come to the January 12th Pampering the Caregiver party that we're going to have and we're um, going to have some great food and great entertainment and it's just going to be uh, great you will go away with a lot of knowledge and uh, that's what we want we want to make sure that go you away, yeah, are encouraged and, and, and you get your support yeah. that you need and and uh, you know know that you have a place to go
And Nancy's cooking, so you know. Yeah, I'm cooking. Well. I'm cooking. I know <laughs> it's interesting, but we're going to have a, a lot of fun things. Um, I want to mention, too, that May 18th is going to be the Caregiver uh, Respite Retreat and Symposium uh, at the Birch One Expo Center. And that is going to be another fun, fun, fun event. Again, anything that we do is to benefit the caregiver. We are not there to add more to you and your responsibilities, but to offer some resources that exist in the area as well as the state. It is now a state event. Oh, it started local, then it it went mid-Michigan, then it went regional, and now we are statewide uh, in a matter of, two and a half months since we started planning this thing. May 18th, mark your calendar, come to the Birch Run Expo Center in Birch Run, Michigan, and join us for this wonderful, wonderful uh, opportunity to get educated. The other thing that uh, we have, um, that some, you know, some of the other uh, functions haven't had is we actually have a caregiver uh, program that you can put on your computer to help you with your finances. And um, we have really uh, thought this through and tried to come up with some general things that you need to know. But this program is so neat because you put in your budget and you start calculating the different things, uh, some of your expenses. expenses you actually that come start along. labeling mm-hmm. your expenses. Mm-hmm. And this program will tell you are you under budget, over budget, where do you need to. to you know, um, maybe cut back or maybe you need to save a little more when your taxes are due or whatever. And it's really neat because it keeps you on track. And um, it's it's just really neat. All it has to do is speak to you. Right. You know, then we have it made. But mm-hmm. it's really a neat, neat program. And I think we are, aren't we going to have some kind of a... a a function where we're going to actually allow people to come in and learn about this program before May. Right. I I don't know if we've picked February or March. We'll have to pick one of those two time frames where the individual that owns, that has yeah, the program. The program. Yeah. Our, yeah. And, he's um, got the copyright to it. Got, it's phenomenal. He, you can do it for individuals. You can do it for a business. And he's going to tweak it for the caregivers. Right. And, it's and a, there's it, a nonprofit program a nonprofit. also. And it's phenomenal because it just if you change your budget, if you change an item, it automatically calculates it for you. You don't have to ask it to do it. Right. It just it does it. And for instance, for instance, okay, you're home a month or two months or three months, and so you buy your medicines every month but then one month maybe you're in the hospital so you get to save all of that copay exactly but maybe you might use that copay money for the gasoline that you're going to have to use to get back and forth to the hospital it's just really neat how it just juggles itself out it's just the neatest thing i was so impressed and uh we're really excited to share this with our caregivers because we know that the number one stress builder is financial Oh, it, when uh, when you're taking care of an individual that is ill and has Alzheimer's, it could last one year, two year, five years, ten years, and you just drain your funds, and it's such a stress level. Very. Uh, first, you go through your parents' funds. Oh yeah. Because that's normally who it is, or yeah. grandparents, and then it starts dipping into yours, and there's it's. You're not. You could lose everything. We've yeah. talked to people that yeah. have lost yeah. everything. Well, I've lost everything. Yes, you know, and because I didn't get the right information, mm-hmm. and uh, now I'm trying. I'm trying to get the right information yeah. and pass it along to our our people, and uh, and it's it's just wonderful. But you know, the thing of it is, is it doesn't have to be. Sometimes it is, but there's so many resources out there. In fact, we um, had a conversation with the uh, food bank this week. Oh, yes. and they were nice. The senior yeah. hunger is. The numbers are frightening. I think it's 80% of our seniors don't have food. I deliver um, once, not I, but I'm on, on a team that once once a month, the first Friday of the month, we go to the food bank mm-hmm. and we pick up boxes and they're, they're 45 to 50 pounds of food and things, you know, per, non-perishables that they, mm-hmm. uh, some of these people get by on that for the whole month and we deliver it to their, we take it right into the house. They're people that cannot seniors that cannot leave the home and these people are phenomenal they are so humble they are so appreciative it's it's heartwarming it's it's one of the best things i've yeah i think i've ever done in my life just food mm-hmm. just food just food food oh my gosh food. and they might take a four pack of toilet paper and it has to last the whole yeah. month one yeah. roll of paper exactly. it's, it's unreal and we asked one of the gentlemen 
um, what do you, there were Christmas bags made up. What do you need? What do you need? What, you know, I don't need anything. I don't need anything. Well, do you need a pair of, do you need more socks or a pair of sweats? No, 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 I don't need anything. And then he stopped and he looked at us and um, he had his tray in front of him and his walker and he's on his walker. He had his Kleenex and he had his um, hand sanitizer. He says, very quietly, very with respect, he said, I really need some of this. And it was a, a hand sanitizer from the dollar store. Mm -hmm. It was, he said, I, and he was on um, insulin and he was diabetic. Yeah, I, he, he said, I have to be clean when I, yeah. I have Something to be clean. Something that simple. So a, a dollar store, uh, that's what he sanitizer. asked for, sanitizer. It was, and tell you, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you for yeah. bringing me this this food. It, yeah. They are just the best. It was, it's the best experience of my life. Mm -hmm. Except they for are. when my son was born. That was, that, you know, yeah. But it's right up there. That is really true. You know, when Joe was alive, um, I would buy him the wet ones. Ah, yeah. Which, you know, were in the canister because I, I couldn't find a basket to go on his walker. <laughs> so I went to the dollar store and I found one of these square plastic ones. And I bungeed, well, I took the, the what do you call them, the strips, mm -hmm. like plastic strips, and you pull them. And uh, I, I ended up putting those on his walker. Walker. Yeah. And, and the only thing that would fit in that basket were those the raw canister of the wet ones but he also had to remain clean extremely clean and uh, no germs yeah and, and but see that was an out-of-pocket expense and at the time they were coming out with antibacterial things and and so you know it was he used that all the time and he went through Kleenexes like crazy he used those for napkins and because he could pull the Kleenex out, where a napkin he couldn't grab. Mm -hmm. He couldn't grab it, yeah. but he could pull Kleenex. And I went through that stuff like crazy. And, you know, these were all things that I never anticipated being a necessity. It was a luxury, yeah. you know, but it became a, a very expensive journey for those little things. Right. Simple they, they add little things like that. It's just. Yeah, it's, you know, and the food—they didn't care about the food. You know, these people—they don't really care about the food. They like the company, you know, <laughs> they like the company that comes. But do you know what we learned is that for a hundred dollars, a family can can sponsor a senior for the year. From what I understand, a year, one hundred dollars will feed somebody for a year. And what they're saying is they don't have enough volunteers to distribute the food, so they have the people making the contribution but they don't have somebody to deliver the food. So, you know, we're looking for volunteers. If you would like to participate and deliver this food to these seniors, you know, call the local food bank. It's on uh, next to ABC 12 in the Flint area. I'm not sure about the other surrounding areas, but, you know, they would appreciate that. And you know what? You'll donate. You'll donate a tank of gas to deliver this, and you'll go with your buddies or your girlfriends, and you'll deliver this food, and you will see so many smiles that yeah. it, it's just priceless and uh you know the people are in need and they're waiting for that and they're you know, mm -hmm. and it's so great and what we also learned was all this food that there's this huge food drive right now going on the warehouse is full we've been told that statistics show that by mid-january the warehouse is going to be empty so the food bank asked me to put this out there for you to consider making a contribution, whether a cash contribution or perhaps buying an ornament uh, at the grocery stores, the gas station, they have them all over the place. If you make a contribution, you will uh, refurbish that warehouse for another month. Yeah. And it's a month to month basis. I never knew that the epidemic for hunger was so high. I just didn't know. And it just breaks my heart, food in this country. And yet we know the restaurants and you know they throw good perfectly good food away but there's so much liability they can so much they on, cannot, you cannot do that because the companies they just can't afford to be sued and so so much goes to waste and this is the solution to this problem and we want to stop that so if you would like to make a hundred dollar contribution I would highly recommend that you consider the food bank in our area, Mid Michigan Food Bank, and they will be very, very happy to accept this um, kind, in kind gift. Right. And I would, and also the volunteers, the to volunteers too. If you can do that, they would love it. And mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just it needs to be done. 
Go with my group. We have too much fun. Yeah, you have, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You load up the truck and off we go. And uh, we go. you get your map. And oh, yes. Oh, everybody it, has. It is a lot of fun. It and, you know, fun. I truly believe that, you know, if people that, um, that give now when they're healthy, that they will receive later when they're maybe not in such a, a good position. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what goes around comes around in a good way. Yes. And we want that too. But I also remember, uh, I use these cliches a lot of times, is that if you're in need, and, and maybe you're a person that's in need, and this happened to me, I, I didn't know how to be poor. I've never been poor in my life. And, you know, I've always been taken care of. So I didn't know how to be. But I am not a beggar either, and I don't ask for things. But sometimes if I did ask for things, I was given a stone. A stone. Instead. Okay. And, you know, a stone. Okay. And that's a Bible term. You know, oh, if, yes, if yes, someone's yes. asking you for something, don't give them a stone. Give them what they need. And, yeah, that, that was given to me, and I thought that was so like a slap in the face. And so I've never been that kind of person, and I don't do that now. But if you do need something, you know, you're not going to receive that type of treatment from us. And, you know, it's true with the food bank. They're not going to give you rotten food, and they're not <laughs> going to give you outdated things. They're, they're going to actually give you something uh, that's current, and you don't have to be afraid. But uh, if you, you are hungry and you um, don't have any food, uh, what I've been told is you have to go through an agency. That's the only bad thing probably about it. You just can't say, I'm hungry, and and they give you something. Mm -hmm. But you have to go through an agency. I don't have all the particulars on that. Uh, I wish I did. But we're going to have the food bank on here as our guest, and then we will discuss and learn how you know, we can get that information yeah. out to people. But there is a shame issue that, that comes along with that sometimes when you have to ask for food. But don't be ashamed because a lot of people love you. It's just that there's so much liability now that uh, it has to be this way. But it's probably a good thing in the long run. But uh, how much time do we have, John? About three minutes. We've got about three minutes left. So I just... Um, I want to wish everyone a Merry, Merry Christmas. I know there's been a lot of talk about getting Merry Christmas out of the vocabulary and going with Happy happy Holidays instead. But, you know, I, I believe that Christmas was the birth of is my Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to continue to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. And then, of course, the New Year is coming up. And we truly believe that 2013 is going to be our year where we're going to do some phenomenal, phenomenal things for our caregivers. And, and we're ready. We are ready to uh, offer uh, some of these wonderful programs to you. But I just want to say happy holidays to you. If you need anything, make sure that you give me a call, 810-845-6713. And also uh, email me if you have a need or you would like to be on the show. And that's Nancy at ndcaregiver.org and or dot com. I'm sorry, and we will make sure that we connect. In the meantime, you enjoy your wonderful holidays. If you want to get out shopping or bake cookies, you make sure you give Christy a call at 964-2202 and let her help you with that needed respite stay. And you can stay for um hour or 24 hours, and uh, we'll take good care of you. And we know that. That you'll be in a safe, very, secure, very, and happy yes, very, place. very much needed, and you'll mm -hmm. feel a whole lot better. And uh, you know, even if you want to sleep at night and you want to drop that loved one off, you can do that. That's what this service is for: is to give you that respite, relief. So, in the meantime, God bless you. Uh, happy New Year to you in advance, and I will see you next year. God bless you. Bye bye now. Goodbye.